All right. Good evening, everyone. Just waiting for another couple of minutes to get started into this. Thank you for those of you who are here. Really looking forward to this. And we should literally be starting in two minutes. So I'm very, very much excited to be going through this today with you folks. So again, it's, it's, it's going to be extremely great. I'm just, just uh, setting down a couple of things actually quickly before we get into this. So just bear with me in a moment, just settling down and then we're going to be good to go. Right, stop sharing. Just bear with me one second. Technology sometimes can just be an absolute nightmare. So I'm just uh, ending the show quickly. Okay. That's better. Okay, so I am hoping that you can see this screen, which I hope you can. And literally in the next two minutes, so well, we've got literally a minute left where we're going to be going through this. So very much excited to be doing this. So thank you for being here. We have uh, 30 seconds to go and we should be getting right into this. And the focus is going to be very much on eczema and we're going to have an absolute wonderful evening in terms of what we're going to be going through. So very much looking forward to that. And according to my clock, it's exactly 7.30. And uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Fahim. I'm a pharmacist prescriber, owner of Amy's Pharmacy that is in Bicester and in Oxford, pharmacist of the year 2019, and voted for two final awards, fingers crossed this year. So very much uh, been a great year in terms of for my professional development. Uh, this year. So thank you very much for all of those who've supported me. I want to, before I get into this, really thank everybody in Vista, everybody in Oxford, my parents, my family, for supporting Amy through everything that we have achieved. So very much really appreciating that. So now that we're going to be getting into this, just a quick disclaimer that this is for educational purposes. I am not going to be discussing things in a professional capacity, but essentially this is for your educational purposes, for you to get a better understanding of eczema and how we manage this. So that's just a disclaimer put out there for you that this conversation that we're having today is essentially for educational purposes. Any professional advice that you need, visit me, visit us in the pharmacy, visit us at the clinic, that's Oxford or Vista, certainly I can help you. So I just thought we'll get some, uh, got another disclaimer out of the way for you now. So the goal essentially today is to give all of you guys a very good understanding of eczema. And the reason that we're doing this and the reason that we've organized these series of webinars that we attend to do on a weekly basis is because what I found in my practice is patients want to know more, but necessarily don't have the, don't have access to resources that will give them more information on various diseases. And one that I've actually, I'm very much uh, in an area that I specialize is dermatology. So I've picked eczema because it's something so, so common. So many patients suffer with this. So many you know, young children, babies suffer with this. And it's an area that I did a study in, in our Oxford branch and Vista branch. And what I found was that most patients are not totally aware of how to manage this condition, how to treat this condition, how to get the best out of this condition. So that's essentially the focus today. The following week, we'll be doing a different webinar. Again, it depends on what you folks would like. Hopefully we're going to be doing acne, but I'll be putting a post out there to discuss with Oxford and Vista what you guys want to go through. So we start 7.30, which we've started now. The first 10 minutes, I just want to do just a brief introduction for those of you who don't know me, a bit about myself. Afterwards, we get into eczema itself, discussing what causes eczema, how we treat eczema, how we manage eczema, and also how we as medical professionals, how we actually diagnose eczema. Then we're going to have a bit of a Q&A where you get a chance to ask any questions that you feel like. So very much looking forward to it. So thank you for that. Now I qualified as a pharmacist in 2010, it was in Leicester University, and then went on to do my further training in, in Boots. Again, very thankful for everybody who supported me throughout that time. Was then very fortunate to work with a certain individual in Oxford, uh, Tawfiq, who taught me everything I, I knew about pharmacy. So very much thankful for that. Then went on to set my, my pharmacy business in Bicester, which was our first store with the will of God. 
my, my parents, my brothers, Wasim Adnan, and a lot of you will be probably familiar with them because we started this business around eight to 10 years ago. And the support that we received from Bista and Oxford has been second to none. Again, I can't thank you enough and I can't be grateful enough. This is partly the reason why I want to give something back to our patients. Well, we then went on to set up our branch in, in Oxford and now we've gone on to set up our clinic. So that's just a brief introduction, a bit about myself. I'm very fortunate to have won an award at 2019, was voted pharmacist of the year. That's in the entire country. I've already been nominated for two awards uh, this year. Again, one is for Farms of the Year again and for the Business of the Year 2020. So uh, pray for us, inshallah, Bista is gonna win an award again. Very much looking forward to that. But the aim of this webinar, now we're actually into the, uh, the aim of the webinar itself. And that is to, that is to uh, essentially explain to you what is eczema? How do you get eczema? and what the treatment for eczema is. That's basically essentially what we're gonna go through. I'm just explaining to my wife if she can close the window so you folks don't get affected by the noise that's coming there. Uh, so she's just about to do that. So apologies if there's a bit of a, a shake in the camera itself. But that's, that's the plan today. I want to make sure that by the end of this, you have a good understanding of eczema. If you've already got an understanding of eczema, you get a better understanding of eczema and you feel comfortable when you are managing this condition, talking to professionals, you, you have a good understanding of this. That's basically the aim of the webinar today. The first thing that's very, very important, and I'm gonna get my drawing tool out. I absolutely love, I love drawing. So we're gonna get my drawing tool out. And that is for you to understand the basic, absolutely basic anatomy. So some of you, let's, let's get this a bit straight actually, there we go. So some of you might be wondering what is anatomy? And I like to describe anatomy as if you had a, let's, let's say we've got this phone in front of us, okay? Anatomy is all about understanding the structure. So if we were to look at this phone from an anatomy perspective, we're gonna label the parts. So this is the camera, this is the front screen, this is a plastic covering, okay? Behind here, we have a different sheath of covering here. That's all anatomy is. Anatomy is the study of the human body and what we're focusing is on structure. What is important for you to understand is have a very, very basic understanding of the skin. Very important for you to understand this because if you don't understand the basics of the skin, it's hard for you to understand why do you get eczema? What does happen when you get eczema and how we treat eczema? So let's, have a, let's dive into and have a look just a bit about the structure of the skin without going into too much depth. Now, anything that we discussed today is very much been summarized and I'm very much keeping it on a very basic level. Obviously, when we teach this to medics and when we teach this to pharmacists, we do go into a lot more depth, but I don't want to, I don't want to bore you with that stuff and get into too much science. Let's stick to what you need to know. So what do you need to know? The first thing that's very important for you to be aware of that the skin can be divided into two layers, okay? Remember that it's two layers. What are the two layers? The first layer is the layer that you can see. So when we look at each other, we have a covering. Okay, think of this as a covering. So if you go back to the analogy of my phone, I've got a, I've got a covering here. So we've got a covering at the back and we've got a covering at the front, okay? That layer is called the epidermis. And that is this here. So here is the epidermis. So the layer that you can exactly, the layer that you can see with the naked eye is known as the epidermis, okay? This layer is what we're going to be very much focusing on with eczema. This is the layer that's causing the problems. This is the layer that is functioning properly. It's not doing its job that leads to eczema. The layer below this, so if you were to go one layer below this, so we go one layer below this, we have the epidermis. Sorry, we have the dermis. So the epidermis is above the dermis. The term epi, so if you just, just for curiosity, the term epi itself, which is here, actually refers to above. So this layer, which is the epidermis, is above the dermis. So naturally, the next part is, if that's above the dermis, then above the dermis, then below the epidermis must be the dermis. So we have the dermis here, okay? So the two layers of the skin that you should remember is the layer that you can see with the naked eye, we call that the epidermis. And that is the layer that's gonna be causing a problem. So I'm gonna star this. This is the layer that causes a problem in eczema, okay? 
The layer below this is called the dermis. We don't necessarily see that, but if you wanted to know where the dermis is, that's the layer when you cut your skin and you bleed, that's when you've gone into the dermis, okay? Now, sometimes when you cut yourself, you might notice that you don't bleed. That is because you've actually not got into the layer below the epidermis. You're actually just very much at the top of the skin, you don't bleed. But the moment you start to see blood, then you're in the dermis, okay? So that's picture A that we've discussed. So from this slide, as a patient, what you should understand is you should now know that the skin can be divided into two major layers. The epidermis is what I can see, and below this we have the dermis. We also have another layer that is not part of the skin, and that is the fatty tissue. Okay, so that's the extra fat that we, none of us like, but that's what gives us the cushioning that we need. Now, I want to bring your attention to picture B. So that's this picture here. And what is important for you to remember from this picture, and the only thing you have to remember from this picture is that the epidermis can be divided into further layers, okay? So the epidermis can be broken down further. Okay, so just remember that. So what you should be able to remember from this slide is the, 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 when we start to label parts of the human body, when we start to talk about structure, for example, this is the nose, this is the eyes, this is my hands, this is my forearm, that's called anatomy. In terms of the anatomy of the skin, there are two layers. There's the epidermis, and that's the layer that you can see with the naked eye, and that's the problem layer in eczema. Below the epidermis, we have the dermis, and in the dermis is where we get the blood, and remember my analogy that when you cut yourself and if you bleed, you're into the dermis itself. So that is what is important for here. So let's move on to the next slide. Let's have a look at some basic functions of the skin. So one of the major functions of the skin is, is it acts as a physical barrier. Think about it, right? If it wasn't for your skin, everything that you see would be exposed to the outside world. And what do we have in the outside world? You've got microbes, You've got various bacteria, you've got fungi. The skin literally acts as an outer covering. Okay, it's an outer, it's an outer coat. So think of it like a coat that we wear. It protects, so that's what it does, it protects. It doesn't just stop from things from getting inside, it also stops from things from moving outside. That is very, very important for eczema. Because what ends up happening in eczema is that you don't just, you don't just have a, a problem with the, with the layer of the skin and things getting inside, the other problem that we have is things start to leak outside. If you ever have a, a burn, the biggest concern that we have as healthcare professionals with a burn is that you might end up damaging the skin and exposing everything underneath and you might lose a lot of water. So that's why when you burn, we always want to understand how deep is the burn? Is the burn just the top layer? Or has it gone deeper that might expose the human body and you might start to leak things, okay? So that's a physical barrier. We also know that it acts as a temperature regulation. When you're hot, you sweat. When you're cold, you shiver. So it does that as well. Now, you might be wondering, some of you might not be familiar with the term cutaneous. I was actually supposed to remove that, but it's still there. But cutaneous refers to the skin. If you ever hear the word cutaneous, it means skin. So what this is telling you, that the skin also provides sensation. So when I touch my skin, I can feel, I can feel. When I, I've got a pen, I can feel the surface of the pen. Okay, if it wasn't for the skin, you would not be able to do that. So that's another function of the skin itself. So you can see it's a very, it's a very, it has many different functions. Metabolic, I'm sure you're familiar with vitamin D. And it has a role in, it, it plays a role in vitamin D. And vitamin D plays a huge role in bone formation. So again, the skin plays a role in that as well. That's why if you're not getting enough sunlight, you may have noticed that we encourage patients to take more vitamin D. We do use various different capsules to help as well. Also what's important, it plays a role in excretion. So when you sweat, if you've ever tasted sweat, you'll know that it's kind of salty because we're removing salt. And also this is very important. And I'm gonna highlight this in red and that is immunity, okay? Immunity is very, very important. So we're gonna highlight this slide because this is important for you to remember that it plays a role in immunity. Very, very important that the skin plays a role in immunity. There's two things I want you to remember from this slide. Number one that I want you to remember is it plays a role in immunity. So that's important here. Number two, I want you to remember it acts as a physical barrier. 
These are the things that basically cause a problem in eczema where things go wrong. And we'll get into this in a moment right now. So let's move on to the next slide. If you've got any questions, do write them on the YouTube channel. I will certainly answer them for you. So before we get into eczema, we need to clarify some definitions. The first one is, when I say the word immune system, what does that mean? And we use this term, but what does the word immune system actually mean? And I like to describe the immune system as your defense mechanism. So if you're on a football pitch, your immune system is the defenders. If you're in a castle, your immune system are all the guards outside. That is all that is, okay? And unfortunately, you're gonna be hearing this a lot more with COVID and you're gonna come across these terms. So these terms will also become quite useful for that as well. And the immune system contains various different people, various different cells, as you can see here. And there's a huge list of them. So we're not gonna be going into this in depth, but I've just got that picture there for you to show you. There's a lot of these guys, there's a lot of these guards who play various roles to help defend the human body. That is all the immune system is. And in eczema, what happens is that the immune system starts to play up. And we'll get into that in a moment why that happens, but your immune system becomes overactive. There isn't actually a problem, but you can imagine that if the guard started to shoot at the general public, that is not a good thing. If the general public are entering, they're safe to enter, why would you shoot them for? But when you get eczema, that's what's happening, is your immune system is thinking, aha, this guy's a bad guy, this guy's a bad guy, this guy's a bad guy. They're not actually bad guys, and it starts to cause damage to your skin. Okay, we'll get into that in a moment. The white blood cells, the white blood cells are the specific guards that I've mentioned to you. So again, imagine your castle, your immune system is all the defense that you have. So you have your guards, you have guns, you have cannons. Nowadays, you'll probably have your jets, all that's part of your immune system, but white blood cells are your guards. They're one part of the immune system, they're your guards. And there's many different types. And I've just mentioned that here, that we've got lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, basophils. There's various different types of white blood cells. These are the guards, and these guards have various different names. Uh, not too important for you to remember. The only thing that, if you do need to remember anything, that is that the, the immune system consists of various different guards, and they are the white blood cells, okay? The immune system also contains various different uh, cannons, it contains various different jets, it contains a submarine, so it's got a lot going on there. So that's just an analogy to make it more easier for you to understand. Antigen, this is important. What is an antigen? Now, any substance, so any substance that is capable of activating the immune system is called an antigen, okay? For example, bacteria, if they get inside your body, they cause you to have an immune response. That means that your body will do something to defend against it. That's known as an antigen. If you take a medicine and your body reacts where you become allergic to the medicine, technically that medicine is also classed as an antigen for you. When you go outside, you suffer with hay fever, pollen gets inside, it causes your body to cause you to have a runny nose, that is an antigen. So anything that prompts your immune response is called an antigen. That could be a medicine, that could be a natural product, it could be, it could be food, it could be anything. And what we find in eczema is your body will start to classify various different substances as antigens when they're not antigens. For example, this pen, if I touch this pen, and it's touching my skin, it should not cause me to have an allergy because it's doing nothing. But in people who suffer with these conditions, they develop this response to things that you shouldn't respond to, and they classify them as antigens. So for some people, the actual the materials in the pen may cause an allergic response, okay? When they go outside and it's hot, the weather, may cause a various response. When it's very, very warm and there's pollen, they get this response. So that is an antigen. I hope that makes sense. But an antigen is just a substance. It could be anything that causes your body to react. Now that is important because again, there's a problem in eczema where your body starts to pick up molecules that are not a problem and it classes them as an antigen and then your body responds. An antibody, you must have heard of this term antibodies because you're gonna be, you know, you've heard it in the news. You must have heard it regarding COVID. But again, these are 
specific kind of substances that are produced by the immune response. Okay, so your body would release these antibodies. So think of these antibodies like a, think of these antibodies like cannonballs. Your body would release these cannonballs to go attack the target. That is an antibody. That's all it is. It's your body's, it's your body's defense mechanism. You could think of it as a gun. You can think of it as a sword. It's just a substance that's released by the body to affect the various parts of the, or a very bad guys, I like to say. The last definition, I think this is the last definition that you need to remember, that is inflammation. Now, if you've ever been to a doctor or if you've ever spoken to a medical professional, we use this term all the time. Oh, it's just inflammation. Oh, it's inflamed. Oh, it's inflammation. What does the term inflammation actually mean? What does it mean for you? What does it mean for us? All the inflammation is, when we say that the body is going through inflammation, that is your body responding to damage. That's all it is. When you damage your skin, so if I was to, if I was to cut my skin right now, okay, my body has to repair that. My body has to respond to that. And that is where you get inflammation. That is where your skin, that's where the body will become, will release various different substances, various different chemicals. They're gonna say, hey Fahim, you've got damage. We are now gonna gather all our troops to fix this. We call that process inflammation. So imagine, for example, you were to have, let's, let's look at the wall here. We would have a crack in the wall. Now, when we're gonna fix that wall, we're gonna put cement on there. We're gonna maybe get a new brick. That whole process is known as inflammation. It's good, but it's also bad when it's, when it's not needed. Anything, if you start to fix something that's not broken, it's not good, right? Same thing with here. What are the features of inflammation? You will know this, hot, painful, Swelling, heat. So if I was to get this and bang this on my thumb really hard, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get hot, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna swell, and there's gonna be heat coming out. That is the common signs of inflammation, okay? Right. Well, there's one more definition left, atopy. When we use the word atopic or atopy, what does it mean? The term atopic refers to an individual who will start to develop a allergy or start to develop an immune response to substances that shouldn't cause you a problem. So my wife is here with me. We could both go in the field and she could become allergic to pollen. The pollen is not actually causing any problems. The pollen doesn't damage you in any way, but your body may become active towards it, cause an immune response, and that's because you know, you've now started to develop this tendency to react to substances that you shouldn't react to. And there's a genetic, there's a genetic cause for that. We call that atopic, okay? So if I ever use the term atopic, eczema, atopic dermatitis, you're thinking, aha, there's some sort of genetic family reason why he's having this problem. That's all it is, okay? If you have any questions regarding these definitions, write them on there, I can go through them again. But now let's get into eczema. What is eczema? We use this term all the time. We use it, oh, you've got eczema, or oh, you've got dermatitis. And you must have heard this and you're thinking, ah, oh, man, this is too much. What does that actually mean? Eczema is a condition that causes dry skin. That's the major point that you have to remember. All eczema is, is a condition that causes dry skin, okay? Eczema is a condition that causes dry skin. We can use another term, and the other term we use is dermatitis. That's another term that we use medically. If you've got eczema, we can call it eczema, we can call it dermatitis. There are subtle differences, but I won't get into this, but you're gonna see them used interchangeably. One day you'll come to the pharmacy, Amy's will say, oh, madam, you're suffering with dermatitis. The other day you might come and I'll say, oh, you're suffering with eczema. It's the same thing, it's the same thing, okay? Now, the term itself, eczema actually means to boil. That's basically what it means. And you might wonder why that is, but when we look at the features, it will make a bit more sense. So all eczema is, is a condition that causes dry skin, dry, itchy, flaky skin. So when I use the word flaky, I mean, when, for example, if you've got dandruff and you lose a lot of, you lose a lot of dandruff from the, from the scalp, that is similar to what happens here. So it's dry, itchy, flaky skin is what ends up happening. Eczema affects, can affect anyone and everyone. In actual fact, I've actually developed a bit of dermatitis on my hand here, random, but it can happen. It's very common in children. So unfortunately, 
one in five children suffer with eczema and one in 12 adults also suffer with eczema. Okay, so it's something that is very common. Keep that in mind. My wife is just leaving the room. Right, so she's now, now she's gone. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. So essentially, what is the next slide? Well, the next slide that we're going to be focusing on here is for you to understand what exactly goes wrong. So let's have a look at what exactly goes wrong. Okay. So with eczema, what, what does end up happening with eczema is your skin becomes unhealthy. So you may be wondering, what do I mean by the skin becoming unhealthy? Well, the reality is with the skin becoming unhealthy, what actually ends up happening is that normally, if we have a look at this picture here, so I'm gonna bring your attention here. What do we find? What we find is that your skin, your skin actually is acting as a barrier. So nothing can get inside. You can have a look, you can't get inside, okay? As well as you're not getting inside, also nothing can escape. Nothing can escape. So we don't want anything to escape. We only want things to escape when we want it to escape. This is healthy skin. Okay, this is what we class as healthy skin. When I say the skin is healthy, that means that nothing can get in and nothing leaves without our permission. What gets in? Foreign invaders. We're stopping foreign particles, foreign invaders from getting inside. You're not getting inside. You're not getting inside. Okay, neither are you leaving. This is healthy skin. Okay, so everything is good here. In unhealthy skin, what happens, and you can see in this picture, is you are going to get breaks in the skin. So we can have a look here, and what we find is you're having breaks in the skin. Look at that, okay? Things can make their way inside. This is a big problem, okay? Not only can foreign invaders make their way inside, but also if you notice, things can make their way outside. That's the problem. That's the major problem with unhealthy skin, is things can get inside and things can get outside. If things can get inside, well, that's a problem. If things can get outside, that's also a problem. And if you were to, if, if let's say, for example, somebody was to present to your house, okay, and he's not, it's not, a, it's not somebody who was intended to come in, you're going to respond, you're going to fight. That's exactly what happens to the human body. When your skin becomes unhealthy, when you start to have a leaky skin, various different substances can get inside. And when you suffer with eczema, you start to react to them. You don't realize actually that's a cat. That's not going to cause me any damage. It's fine. Come inside. Oh, that's just a bit of, you know, that's just a bit of rubbish that's made its way inside. Nothing to worry about here. I can throw that outside. With eczema, what happens is you will react to it. You will overreact to it. And as a result of overreacting to it, it causes you to get various different features. That's what's happening in, 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 in eczema. So this is a summary slide. What happens is unhealthy skin can lead to allergens. So all allergen is, is a specific type of antigen. That's what your body will respond to this. So what ends up happening is in eczema is unhealthy skin can lead to allergens entering the skin. And this switches on the immune system and you get inflammation. Okay, that's the terms that we use. So the word inflammation is the body's process of repairing things, okay? Now, if you start to repair something that's not, that's not broken, it's not a good idea, okay? So what's happening here is, let's think about this, right? House dust is not a problem. It should not cause your body to cause an immune response. But guess what your body does? Mites, you can argue with, fair enough. Pollen, for example, shouldn't be a problem. It's just pollen that is landing on your skin isn't causing you to have any problems. But if there's a skin that's leaky, and it makes its way inside or gets into contact with various cells that think, aha, you're a bad guy, you're gonna get a problem. And this is the picture here, is your skin, the, up, the epidermis, the top layer of the skin is damaged. And with that top layer of the skin becoming damaged, that is a problem. And when that layer of the skin becomes damaged, that's where you end up having a problem. That's why you get eczema, okay? So what you need to understand is if I suffer with eczema, it's because the top layer of my skin is not functioning properly. It's become leaky. If it's leaky, things can get inside and things can get outside. What can get inside is various different molecules that I may just react to can make their way inside, but that's gonna be a problem. What can get outside is the water that hydrates the skin can leave as well, so that's another problem. 
That's the two things to remember. Various molecules that you shouldn't react to get inside and various substances that shouldn't leave come outside, especially water, okay? So there's, when I, there's many different types of atopic eczema. There's various different types, sorry, of eczema. Eczema is just an umbrella term. You can get atopic eczema, you can get discoid eczema, you can get numbly eczema, you can get uh, irritant eczema. You can get various hundreds of different types of eczemas, but we're focusing on atopic eczema. That is the eczema that, you're, that you may be born with or children are born with, that you have this genetic tendency to develop allergies and you end up getting this dry flaky skin, that is atopic eczema, okay? It's the most common, so it's the most common, that's important to remember, that's why we're focusing on this. Sorry, I've, I've gone one slide too fast forward. Let's go back. So it's the most, it's the most common, that's one. It runs in families, and what we find actually is that if you've got a parent, if there's one parent who suffers with any sort of asthma, hay fever, there's a 60% chance that the child will suffer with some sort of eczema or some sort of uh, hay fever or, or asthma. If both parents have any sort of asthma, hay fever, eczema, it goes to about 75 to 80% that the child will suffer with it. So you can see that there's a high genetic drive to get this condition, okay? So, what are the features? Well, the biggest, most important feature, which I'm gonna highlight is people will present with itch. Whenever we see patients with eczema, they have an itch. That's the first thing that's important, you'll have an itch, okay? But why are you having an itch? Is because your skin's become leaky and because your skin's become leaky, your body thinks foreign invaders have made their way inside. And because they've made their way inside, your body will respond through inflammation. And that causes you, your skin to itch. Your skin becomes dry. Sensitive, we know why it becomes dry because you're going to lose water. It can become inflamed and that's your body responding. So it can become red, hot, painful, okay? Heat, swelling. It may become scaly and that is basically where you end up losing a lot of a, the top layer of the skin. You start to lose it so fast that you can see it. And think of it like, uh, think of it like a snake. When a snake starts to scale, it starts to lose its skin. You can actually visibly see it. This is what ends up happening in eczema. Some people, you can actually see that scaling. Same thing you happen in dandruff. If you've got dandruff and you do this with your hair, the dandruff will fall, you can see that. You may have some discharge. So your skin might actually, you might see the water leaking and there's swelling as well. So these are the common features that you get with eczema. Okay, the most important one, which I've highlighted here as well, and I've purposely mentioned this twice, and that is itch. That is extremely important. People who have eczema, they will have a form of itch. So that's important for us as medical professionals to diagnose for you, okay? Now, how does it present? Well, it varies from age to age. It does vary depending on how old you are. Children, it tends to affect the elbow, the front of the kneecap and the face. That's what it tends to affect children. You end up getting this dry, red, hot area that affects the Elbows and it affects the cheeks. Elbows, cheeks, scalp, and front of knees. That's what it seems to affect. But what we do find, interestingly enough, is it does not affect the diaper area. So the diaper area is affected in eczema. So that's very important for us. Whenever we're diagnosing a child, we have a look to see is the diaper area affected. If the diaper area is affected, it may not be eczema. If the diaper area is spared, everything else is there, we say, aha, this person must may be suffering with eczema. Okay. In adults, what we find, it tends to affect this region here. So it tends to affect this region here. It tends to affect the back of the knees, very common effect in the back of the knees. You may also find some release of fluid. So that's where we note the oozing. You can see that there's the oozing there. You might get that, that as well, okay? Again, affecting the back of the knees and also can affect the neck, okay? So you're gonna get this dry, itchy, scaly like dandruff you're going to get a lot of this release of skin and you can have it you might be able to actually make out here if we actually if you look closely you'll notice that this skin is actually quite white and it's, it's it, this skin is becoming quite white and why that's becoming quite white is because it's scaling 
they're losing so much skin so fast that you can actually start to see the white white. And you can see here as well, bits you can really make. And if your screen is quite small, if you were to enlarge your screen, you'll be able to see it a bit more. But if you look closely, you get really close to the screen. And I've got it on my, I've got it on my, uh, on my, on my phone. You'll see that it's kind of really, really white. And that's what we refer to as scaling, okay? How do we diagnose it as healthcare professionals? So as healthcare professionals, you might be wondering, how do we diagnose it as healthcare professionals? Well, the reality is as healthcare professionals, how we diagnose it is we look for very common signs or very common symptoms. The first symptoms that we're looking for is you as a patient must complain of itch, okay? You need to present to us complaining of itch. That is important. If you present to the itch, then we move to the next step. If there's no itch, we're not always rushing towards an eczema or atopic eczema. Secondly, there must be three or more of the following, okay? So the patient may say, actually, I have a history where it's affecting my, so it's affecting this elbow region crease here or the back of my knees, okay? It's also affecting my eyes and ankles. So that might be there or it might not be there, okay? So the patient may not have that, but the patient might say, actually, there's a history of asthma in my family. My dad has asthma, my mum has asthma, or they have hay fever. Again, that might be there, that might not be there. So let's have a look. Remember, it's gotta be at least three. So that means that the remaining one, two, three have to be there. Otherwise, we're not gonna diagnose you. So even though you might have an itchy skin, you have to have three or more of the following. So you may come present to us and you may say, actually, I've got generally dry skin all year round. That's one point. Symptoms began before the age of two years, especially if you're over the age of four, or you can visibly see the skin scaling. You can visibly see the eczema on the skin. That's how we diagnose it. So patient has an itch, number one. Secondly, they may have a family history. So they might say that my parent has eczema, my mom, dad have eczema, that we have hay fever. That's gonna pull us more towards that. They say they have they also have this itch all year round, dry skin all year round, that again puts you towards eczema. And they say that my symptoms started at childhood. We would say actually there's a very high chance that you might be suffering with eczema as long as we ruled other things out. There's a severity chart that we do use as well as healthcare professionals. We want to know how severe it is. It's very useful. Okay, we ask certain questions. For example, one of the questions we might ask is, over the last week, how many days has your child or you have itchy skin? If, it, if you say it's every single day, then we will give you four points. Okay, so this is a total score out of 28. Then we'll ask you last week, how many nights did you were, you, were your nights disturbed by eczema? You might say zero days, and then we'll give you zero. So it's now four plus zero is four. Then we say actually over the last week, how many days have, your, uh, have you been bleeding? You may say five to six days. So we give you three points. So this patient has four plus three is seven. And if it's going towards seven, so if we look, if we have a look at this side here, so I want to bring your attention to this side here, what we find that we can grade it. So depending on what marks you get, we can grade it and we can see, do you have mild eczema? Do you have moderate eczema? Do you have severe eczema? Okay, for severe eczema, you've got to get between 25 to 28 points. For mild eczema, it's between three and seven and then the others are in between. So this is something that I thought might be quite useful for you to be aware of. Again, just a brief understanding that we can grade eczema as mild, moderate, severe, and that little uh, diagram I showed you does a good job of explaining that. Mild areas affect very, doesn't affect areas of, the, areas of dry skin is, and is an infrequent itching. In moderate, you do have dry skin, but it's frequent itching. You may also get an impact on everyday life. Severe is widespread areas of dry skin. So it's affecting a lot of the skin. It's cracking, it's oozing. Remember, if you're gonna crack the skin, there's a chance that you might lose what's under the skin so it could come out, okay? Okay, so how do we treat eczema? Now, this is what I wanna spend a bit of time because this is what's important for US patients. How do we treat eczema? Well, in order for us to treat eczema, what we need to do is first of all, we need to eliminate anything that triggers your eczema. So you might wonder, Fahim, what are you talking about? I'll explain that in a minute. So the first step is gonna be that we have to remove anything that triggers your eczema. So we'll go into that in a second. The next step that we wanna look at, 
and that is, is we want to restore the barrier of the skin. Okay, we want to restore the barrier of the skin. Then what we want to do after that is we want to treat, if you're having a bad day, that we want to treat the inflammation. That is what we want to do, okay? And that's the steps that we follow as healthcare professionals when we want to treat this. The first thing we have to prevent it. Prevention is always better than cure. If you came to me, let's say, was, you know, let's use my example, Fahim was to present to my clinic. The first thing I want to do is, Fahim, what causes your symptoms? What causes your itch? What causes your dry skin? Is there anything that makes it worse? Is there anything that triggers it? If there is, we need to remove it. So let's have a look at this now. So what are the common triggers? The common triggers might be soaps. So some people will say to you soaps, detergents, okay? We find a lot of healthcare professionals, a lot of beauticians who use various soaps, wash their hands, okay? They can end up getting a, a form of eczema, dry skin, because it's irritated. You're coming into contact with various substances that irritate your skin. So we need to stop you from using them. Now, obviously with COVID-19, we are encouraging individuals to wash their hands with soap. So you must keep that in mind that in these current climates, it's very important, but I'll tell you a way to get around how to make your skin still remains good. Maybe environmental factors like cold and dry weather. So you may say when I go to, when it gets really cold, it irritates my skin. When it's really hot, it irritates my skin. So we have to keep you cool or we have to keep you away from the heat and so on. Maybe dust mites, maybe pet fur. When you get into, touch, when you get into contact with animals, you end up getting this dry, itchy skin. Stay away from it. Maybe it's food allergies. You might say, Fahim, whenever I have milk, eggs, peanuts, soya, wheat, I end up getting this dry, itchy, red, hot, tender skin. Well, then guess what? <laughs> you gotta keep you away from that. Okay, so that's something to remember as well. Now, in addition to that, what's also important is this is something that we're not able to help much with. I'm just about to, sorry, plug my laptop so it doesn't end up dying. Apologies for the bit of a delay. There we go. Plugged in, perfect. So what is important here is hormonal changes. So uh, women, when you are on time or it's your cycle, fortunately it tends to get worse. And that's something that to keep in aware as well. Skin infections can make it worse as well. So the first thing that we're doing, we're trying to keep away the triggers. And this is a nice picture on this side. I really like this picture because it really does explain it. So, you know, keep your way from soaps, avoid extreme temperatures, we express stress, another big one, huge one stresses, food allergies, fabrics, like tight fitted clothes, various clothing can irritate your skin. So we first of all say, let's eliminate what's causing the problem because let's say you have a, let's say you have an infection and you keep treating with antibiotics, but you don't solve the problem. You don't solve what's causing the infection. You're gonna keep getting the infection. It's the same thing with eczema. If we don't keep you away from what's causing your skin to become red, hot, or what's causing your body to overact, you're going to keep getting it. So that's the first thing that we do. Once we've done that and we've discussed this, then what we do is we then have to repair the skin. We have to repair that skin. Now, I'm going to draw this picture for you briefly here. Now, imagine this being your skin. There's the top layer of the skin. Okay, it's now leaky. You can see that there's gaps. Okay. There's gaps here. Because of there being gaps here, you know that certain substances can make their way inside. You know that certain, now you know that certain substances like pollen or anything that can irritate your skin can get inside. Also, what you've learned now is in addition to that is you end up losing water. Okay, water will come out as well. So your skin becomes dry, you're losing water because you've got gaps, okay? So what do we have to do? We have to protect the skin now. Now we have to protect the skin. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna moisturize the skin, okay? What we're going to do is we're gonna use this special medical moisturizer to basically form bridge, form bridges in the skin and to stop you from losing water and stop from things from getting inside. So literally what we're doing, we're using this, think of it like cement. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna to start to block all this area up right there. You're not getting inside, you're not getting inside, you're not getting inside, and you're not leaving outside. That is all we're doing. So we're gonna coat the skin with this emollient. There you go, I'm, I'm pretending to have put this cream on my skin, and this cream now will protect my skin. If it protects my skin, nothing can get inside. If nothing gets inside, it doesn't irritate my skin. If it doesn't irritate my skin, I don't have to itch. 
If I don't have to itch, I don't get red, hot, tender skin, we're all happy. So we have to apply these emollients. By applying these emollients, we're basically protecting the skin. What is an emollient? You might wonder what is an emollient? Emollient is the classy term, is the medical term that we use when we want to say moisturizer, that's all it is. And some of you may actually recognize some of these products. Some of you may recognize these products. You may actually be, have used them. You may have a family friend who's used them, but these are the various emollients, various creams that exist and they hydrate the skin, okay? So that's important for you to remember there, okay? So what, what is an emollient? What, it, what an emollient is going to do is it's going to keep the skin's moisture intact. So we're keeping, we're keeping all the water intact, okay? It's important to control your eczema. It's hydrating the skin, okay? And make sure that the skin acts as a barrier. Remember, the skin is a barrier. We want to make sure that happens. And it traps moisture. So it's trapping moisture. So it's preventing the water from being lost. Okay, that's important. So this, I cannot stress how important emollients are. In actual fact, I'm going to star this because it's so important. Emollients are so important. Nine, Honestly, the amount of patients that I see that their eczema is not getting better is to do with the fact that they're not using these emollients properly or they don't appreciate how important this is. I cannot stress it. If there's anything you take away from this slide, and I'm gonna put my hands in the, put my hands like this, please, please, please apply your moisturizers. Okay, and I'll tell you how to apply them in a moment. So you might wonder, Fahim, there's so many moisturizers, which are the best moisturizers to use? This depends on what works for you. But you have to try all the various moisturizers. It's what you are comfortable with, what you're gonna use regularly, what works for you. You may also ask, should I use a cream or ointment? The reality is if you've got very, very, very dry skin, you should always use an ointment. Ointments are way better. Only problem with ointments are is they can cause the skin to become, become greasy and some people don't like that. And also if you're going to work and you're full of grease, you might not like that. Creams are quite good if you've got moist skin, so your skin isn't really dry, it's moist, so you can use a cream. And what I like to tell my patients is use the cream throughout the day, but morning first thing and evening first thing, use an ointment, you're not going to work, use that. But if it's a problem throughout the day, use a cream, okay? So what routine should you follow? This is what you need to do. What you need to do first thing is when you wake up early morning, so the first thing you're gonna do when you wake up, let's change that color. Let's get something more prominent. Get something like black. The first thing you do when you wake up early morning is you're going to wash yourself, whether you wash your hands, your face, whatever you do. And you need to use a soap substitute. So you need to use those creams that basically can be used instead of soap. Now with COVID-19, we are encouraging you to wash your hands with soap. So do do that. Do wash your hands with soap. Make sure you're doing that. But afterwards, what you can do once you wash your hands with soap and you've removed all the microbes and the virus and so on, then what you can do is you can use this, this soap substitute. What is a soap substitute? Remember, soaps contain various chemicals that can dry your skin, irritate your skin. We want to take you away from that. Instead, we're going to give you a moisturizer that doesn't irritate your skin. And you can also use it as a soap substitute. But remember, it doesn't obviously with COVID-19, it doesn't, it doesn't help with that. So keep using your soap with that. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to get up in the morning. Rather than using your bar of soap, let's forget COVID, you're gonna have this soap substitute. You're gonna wash your hands with this. So you're gonna apply this on and wash your hands. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get like a towel. You're gonna to get a towel, you're gonna to pat dry it with a, with a towel. Okay, once you pat dry it with a the towel, then what you're gonna do is you're going to apply your emollient, okay? What is important to remember here is you're not drying the skin totally. What you don't want to do is to get a towel and dry it absolutely everywhere because if you dry it you're not trapping the moisture we want to trap that moisture so what you're going to do is you are going to essentially what you're going to do is you're going to apply this emollient once you pat dry the skin you're going to get your towel and you're going to do this so you're drying it but you're not totally totally drying yourself and then you put your emollient on top okay how do you apply the emollient very, very important for you to apply the emollient the direction the hair moves, okay? Very important for you to do that. So my hair moves in this direction. I do not apply an emollient like this or rub like this. I leather it on and I go like this. I stroke it on to the direction my hair moves. Why? Because what can happen is you can remove small hair follicles and that can irritate the skin, 
So whenever you're using a cream, you never go like this. Get it, apply the direction the hair moves. Like this, okay? Like this, okay? Uh, you know, if you were to use it on your, on your legs, again, you're gonna be using the way the hair moves. So that's important, okay? Also, I wanna stress this point, you want to apply it to all of your skin. Please, please, please don't just apply it to the area that you've got dry skin, apply it everywhere, okay? Moisturize the entire skin. So that's important there for you. Then we have these steroids. So this is uh, one of the last slides. We have these steroids. If you've got any questions, by all means, put it on the YouTube. I'm happy to answer them for you. We, we have literally a couple of minutes left now, then we'll wrap this up. So steroids are very important to control the active eczema. So when you have a flare up, when you come to our clinic or you come to the pharmacy and you say, look for him, my skin is now fleecing liquid, it's itchy, it's red, it's tender, it's inflamed. You can see it because it's itchy, it's painful, it's tender. That's where we use these steroids. Remember, remember something, right? If, for example, we let's draw the skin. Let's say there's our skin here you've applied all this moisturizer on your skin. So you've got all this wonderful, you're doing a great job every morning, you're getting up, you're moisturizing, you're doing a great job, perfect. However, what you haven't done is you haven't solved the problem that's happening underneath. Underneath your skin is reacting. Underneath your skin is angry, okay? It's causing various different changes to happen because your body is reacting to something has got into contact with before you use your emollient, okay? This is all happening underneath. If you don't solve this problem, eventually what's gonna happen is, and I'm gonna get my razor out, is this will cause, this will cause this to happen. It will cause your skin to become inflamed and leaky. It's gonna become leaky. It doesn't matter what moisturizer you use. It's gonna become leaky. Why? Because you're not solving this underlying problem here this problem here you're not solving. That's where the steroid comes into it. I hope that makes sense to you. You can use all the emollients if you want in the world. If you have a problem underlying here, where you have an underlying problem under your skin and you don't treat it, your eczema is gonna get worse. This is where the steroid comes into it. This is where you're gonna get this prescribed by a pharmacist or by a doctor. This is where you're gonna get this prescribed, okay? And that's where we treat the underlying problem. Why we're doing that? Because if you don't treat the underlying problem, then eventually your eczema is not, you can, you, can, you, can, you can start to cause all, you can make all the barriers you want, but if you've got a problem inside and you're covering the outside, we're gonna go from inside to outside. So we have to control what's inside. That's where we use these steroids. Okay, so don't worry about steroids. There's nothing to worry about. Topical refers to the skin. Steroids are essentially, so, the body also contains these various steroids. There's special substances or chemicals found in the body. And the man-made version is what we call a corticosteroid. That's all it is, a man-made version we find naturally. And this will basically reduce the redness, makes the skin less itchy, less sore, helps with the healing. If you didn't do this and you keep moisturizing and you've got a flare up and you don't use your steroid properly the way it's been explained to you to use, your skin condition won't improve. So remember, the most important thing is the emollient, but if you have an active problem where you're having a flare up, where it's itchy, it's red, it's painful, and again, you'll get this diagnosed by a clinician, either by myself, a pharmacist, or a doctor. And what we find is that if this does happen, okay, that's why we recommend a steroid to you, okay? How much should I apply? You should apply as what we direct to you, what we explain to you. Too much is bad, too little is bad. If you use too little, it's not gonna solve your problem. Do steroids cure eczema? Big cross, no. Steroids do not cure eczema, okay, under any circumstances. They help, they help with the underlying problem that's helping now, okay? They don't cure eczema, so remember that. How do I know how strong the steroids are? Because steroids are various strengths. Well, the simplest answer is ask your clinician, your pharmacist, your doctor, but also you can read the information leaflet and we score our steroids as mild, moderate, potent, very potent. That's how we score it. Mild, we recommend for the face. 
moderate, potent, very potent, that we can recommend on various parts of the body itself can be used, okay? And the classification depends on how strong it is, how much it reduces the inflammation, side effects, and so on. Are steroids safe? Yes, steroids are absolutely safe if they're used properly. If they're not overused or underused, yes, they are safe, nothing to worry about. Does it matter which order you use an emollient and steroid? Mm. The studies say it doesn't make a difference, but what we find is at least leave a 10 minute gap. If you are gonna use your emollient, leave a 10 minute gap before you use your steroid. If you're gonna use a steroid first, then leave a 10 minute gap before you use your emollient. Why? Because you're going to dilute the steroid, okay? So that's very, very important that it doesn't matter too much how you use it, but leave a 10 minute gap. If you, if you really want to know if what I should do ideally, then use your emollient first. And if you have to use a steroid because you're having an active flare up, then use the steroid, okay? Remember the steroid is gonna be prescribed and is only used when you're having an active flare up. Otherwise we don't recommend it. If you have to use the two products together, so I have to use now my steroid cream and my emollient cream, how to use it, does not matter? Leave a 10 minute gap. But if you really wanted to know, use your emollient first, then apply the steroid cream. So these are the different strengths. As you can see, there's various different strengths. Hydrocortisone, anything less than 2% is mild. You may have come across betnovate. So you may have come across these terms, betnovate, humivate. Okay. So this is where this, this is where they're becoming stronger now. Betnovate stronger. You may come across demovate. Okay, so this is where this is becoming stronger now. So summary before we wrap up is we want to treat the defective barrier. We want to moisturize the skin. How often should you moisturize the skin? At least twice a day when you don't have an active flare up. I would recommend up to four to five times as often as you can. Every time you shower, every time you bath, every time you wash your hands, use your emollient throughout the day, three or four times a day will be great for you. Avoid anything that irritates your skin, such as allergens. If you're, if you're interested about food allergy, getting food allergy tested, do pop inside, speak to one of the pharmacists or clinicians, they can help you with that. Anything that triggers it, avoid. If you are gonna bath, you can use special oils. Again, that can be prescribed and you must treat the active eczema. So to summarize, use your emollients routinely. Make sure you leave the emollients on as long as you can, as often as you can. If you actually have an active eczema, then I'd recommend that you use the steroids that's been prescribed. Also keep an eye out for anything that triggers it, like clothing, reduction in house and dust mites and stress. It's now 8.25. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions on YouTube, please leave them there, I'm happy to answer them. I really appreciate you being here today. Subscribe, like the YouTube channel, and next week we'll be doing a different topic. So I'll, I'll hang around for about a couple of minutes if you've got any questions. Otherwise, have a great evening. So it looks like no questions. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you.